Okay, so like, I've never made an internet video before. I'm not really a big fan of video. But um, this is my first ever video game review, because I just bought this game on Steam. It's Pac-Man 256, which just came out a couple of days ago. And uh, it's unforgivably unplayable. I'm a really big Pac-Man fan. I've uh, been playing Pac-Man since, since it came out, since the 2600. I've owned a whole bunch of different versions. I've got the arcade board for um, Ms. Pac-Man. I've got the speed-up chips for it, and I fucking love that game. I play it all the time. Pick this up for Steam, and um, right, click on it. It'll probably work better. And it's complete bullshit. It starts off with uh, basically the inability to even configure your controls. You, um, I guess you guess at what keys do what because it doesn't tell you and you can't change them. So there's no option in this configuration for changing them. And uh, so I'm using Joy2 key to adapt my USB joystick so that it works. So once you get past that hurdle and the other settings that don't seem to really make much difference, such as one called, um, what's that ridiculous thing? Title safe? Look, it brings things in from the edges of the screen. You push it again, they go back. I have no idea what that's for, and there's no real help or explanation for any of it. Um, the game is fundamentally unplayable. It, it, since the early days, the whole point of having a Pac-Man game is making it you know, easily controlled. It's a high-speed game. you really got to be there with your reflexes and the controller. And in the arcade, it gave you a four-way stick because you can only move in four directions. Easy enough. What they didn't do was include any code for handling a diagonal. And what this results in, if you ever use an eight-way stick on the original arcade game, is unpredictable behavior when you push a diagonal direction. The same problem existed on the Neo Geo Pocket, where they gave you a little plastic ring, which went into that little great little thumbstick, so that you can only push four directions. All right, multiplayer, I don't want that. And uh, if you didn't use that, when you run up against a wall and push a different direction, you get unpredictable behavior. Here's what happens. If you push up against this wall and hold up, the diagonals now do nothing. So when you're leaning against a wall on your way through, you want to change direction, nothing happens. So anybody who's playing this with anything but a keyboard and that's pretty much anybody with any joystick or controller of any sort who presses a diagonal is not going to make the turn they expect. Sometimes it seems to just reverse direction. Sometimes it changes direction when you don't want it to. It remembers your last button press. So on a long one like this, you push down now and release, you'll turn down when you get there. It is, it is a potentially a design decision or potentially these guys only play tests with a keyboard or and I have a hunch that Namco essentially wanted them to do it for a very small price and said, build us a game. It's got to be cheap. They said, do you want a configuration screen? They said, fuck no. They said, do you want it to, you know, be play tested? And they said, fuck no. We got a mobile game where it was impossible to control because you're playing with a touch screen, where I got exactly the same complaints. It's just about impossible to play because a touch screen is not uncontrollable. And they said, let's build that for PC. Use the same code. Don't bother putting in anything fancy or special or new. Don't make it configurable. Do it as quickly and cheaply as you can. We'll put it on Steam for five bucks and hope to fuck somebody buys it. Honestly, I can't imagine how you can screw up a game like this so badly where your only job is to give the player four compass points in a four-way maze. In a game where the whole point is escaping from an approaching death at the bottom of the screen, and, and roving things on this playboard, you need to have controls you can trust. And these controls absolutely cannot be trusted. They don't do what you expect, they don't do what you want, they don't do what they should. A couple other design decisions that make no sense to me at all, beyond the menu that makes no sense, and you know the lack of configurability. The glitch is what you're escaping from. Now in the original arcade game, nobody really expected the player to get so far up into the game that they would you know, get into parts of the code that would basically screw up the game. So in this one, it's using that as a play feature. There's the glitch. It's approaching from the bottom of the screen, advancing up, and that's what you're running from this whole time. They use that same feature later on in the game to drop power-ups in front. Look at this. There's one right there. Now it's a good thing. The same feature of the game is both your death and, and your benefactor. Honestly, I don't know what the fuck they were thinking. And I've been playing this for 20 minutes, and I playing it so delicately, making absolutely sure I'm pushing the right direction at the right time only because because it's so unuser friendly. User unfriendly. Like really, that's a good thing. It's the bad thing that approaches from the bottom and now it's good for me. Stupid.
anyway, yeah, 20 minutes of this, and I'm um, going to go take advantage of Steam's refund policy, because honestly, I don't think I'm ever going to play this again. It's fucking... Look, I'm holding up! Oh, but it's up in diagonal, so it won't work. Hold up in diagonal, and that one works. I don't... I, there's no rhyme or reason to this. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It just... It's fucking unpredictable. And, uh, that's a shit way to make a maze game. So, um, fuck it, I'm done.